Welcome to Quick Tips for Quilting and Sewing. I'm Cindy Cloward and today we're talking about pressing. Pressing is an essential part of any quilting and sewing project. In fact, it is usually the last step that can make a big difference in the finished look of your sewn item. So today I'm going to be talking about the pressing techniques I use when I quilt and sew. And the first thing you need is to establish your pressing station. Now I have two pressing stations at my house when I sew. I have one right next to my sewing machine, so that makes it really easy when I'm sewing. It's a smaller area where I press. I have an iron, I have a clapper, and a few pins right there, as well as my other sewing tools right by my sewing machine. But I have a bigger pressing station, which is not an ironing board. It's very similar to this, just a little bit bigger. That is right next to my cutting table. And on that area, this is my pressing station toolbox, my pressing toolbox that has everything I need. And I like that it holds everything together. So make sure you have a nice uh, pressing board. Uh, some people use those wool mats. I think they're perfectly fine. But I use uh, this Alyssa iron because of the space between this hot iron and wool. It can scorch a wool pressing mat, so I don't use a wool pressing mat. I keep it simple. And in fact, I made this pressing mat that I'm using today. And how to make one of these, we have a DIY video. You simply have a board, put batting on it, and cover it with fabric on top and it's really easy to make. So make your own, you're not limited to an ironing board. So what do I have in my little pressing station? Well, I've got a mister. These are very handy to have. This one's full of water. You can also put starch in your mister. And again, it's really easy to use and at very fine mist of water. So these are excellent. This, this is made for quilting and sewing. I have starch. Again, you could have two misters. This one, I got this starch, which I really like from this company. And so it's a nice spray starch. And then I know one starch, one's water. I also have a notepad because sometimes I'm, when I'm pressing, I need to make notes. Um, and I like to have a notepad handy in there, which means I need a pencil. I also have a turning tool, a stiletto, a measuring tool there. I have something, uh, a pin holder. Of course, my glasses in there, some snips, seam ripper, uh, a measuring tape. And then I've got my, I have another small iron. If I'm working on small project, this one doesn't have the pop-up feature, but I, I really do love this iron. I'm going to put that to the side. And of course, we have the quilter's clapper and the tailor's clapper. Now, what is a clapper? A clapper is an age-old tool that has been used for a long time in garment sewing. But Riley Blake Designs introduced the quilter's clapper to the sewing community many years ago. This tool became a quick favorite for so many people. It is a piece of hardwood that's unfinished, and that is important because, because it's unfinished, this uh, wood absorbs heat and moisture when you're pressing. It makes this clapping sound when you lay it down, that hence the clapper, and it makes a big difference in your quilting and sewing items, especially your quilt blocks. Riley Blake Designs makes these two sizes. Again, Taylor's clapper refers to garment sewing, but um, I use both for my quilting and sewing. And I feel like Riley Blake Designs are just the very best because we have this excellent grip. They're made in the United States and they are just a wonderful tool Next, you need a really good iron. Now, I'm a big fan of this Aliso iron. I like the pop-up feature. It gets super hot, and um, I really love how it works. And it has a really good steam option, and you don't always use the steam option. I rarely use it, but when I do, I love it. And it works really well when you steam and use the clapper on your project. I'm gonna show you later how that they work hand in hand. But make sure you have a nice hot iron. I like the auto shut off feature. I think that's important if you have to step away for a while that it automatically, automatically shuts off. I think that is really helpful. So now let's talk about quilting. 
Now, quilting in the United States is synonymous with putting your quilt blocks together, sewing together. I know in other countries they call it patchworking or piecing your blocks, but in the United States we kind of call quilting um, piecing your blocks together. So you're going to hear me use that term a lot. And it's really important to have accurate sized blocks that lie as flat as possible. And how to achieve that is to make sure you cut out your pieces very accurately. You're sewing them accurately, which means a fourth inch seam allowance. No one's perfect. So if your blocks are coming out a little bit small, sometimes I do a scant fourth inch seam allowance. But the last thing you need to do is press accurately. It can make a big difference in the size of your block and if your block lies flat or not. So a lot of times I'm pressing before I even sew. And let me show you why. Because a lot of times you can skip a uh, pinning when you do, when you press two blocks together. So let me show you. You're gonna make a temporary heat adhesive. And this works really well if you're chain piecing a lot of blocks together. So I'm gonna put these, I'm gonna press these together, make sure they're perfectly on top of each other. And I've got this temporary adhesive and I take it to the machine, I don't have to pin it. And um, it's not a strong adhesive, it's just heat bond. And um, I'm gonna sew my fourth inch seam allowance on both of these. I can chain a whole bunch together. Now the next thing I bring them back here and I'm gonna do a technique which is called setting your seams. So when I was new to quilting, I often heard the term set your seams. And I didn't quite understand what that means. Well, let me show you what that means. So basically, it is the first press after you've sewn your unit before you open it up. You are pressing it closed. And what you're doing is adding heat and pressure to your fabric and the stitches setting them in, making the fabric easier to work with, especially when your next step is opening up your quilt block. So I'm gonna set both these seams. And again, pressing is not ironing. Ironing is moving around, and sometimes when I'm lazy, I hurry and do the, that, or if I'm impatient, but pressing is really holding it in place and pressing. Okay, so I've set these seams like this. My next step is I open them up, put it towards the camera like that, and I usually run my finger across this middle seam like that, and it's still warm. It's not gonna be too hot. If it's too hot, wait till it cools down a little bit and open that up, and what that does is press, make sure the seam is pressed to one side on the back side. So I open it up like that, and then the next thing you're going to do is press on grain. Now, you're not gonna want to press off grain because it can distort your fabric. So just try and remember to press on grain. I just run the tip along like that. And if I'm not in too big of a hurry, I just lay down my clapper like that, let it cool for a while. But when I'm in a big hurry, I just take the clapper and run it across like that. And that just gives you a beautiful press along that seam. And I'm gonna repeat that again on this other block or this other unit. Setting my seam, opening that up, run along with my finger. I just take that along like that. Okay, that's ready to go. Again, if you press it as you go, you're just gonna have better results in your quilt blocks and project. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that over here. And the next thing I would do is I'm gonna make a four patch with this. And since these are both pressed to the dark side, then you can nest your seams, which creates a flatter block. Now, just a note right now, I never open up my seams. 
and I'm going to tell you why right now. Because if you opened up your seams, and if you're a longtime sewer and not a quilter, this is going to feel so foreign to you because you always open your seams up when you are making garment sewing or sewing other projects. But let me just show you. Let me, in fact, I'm going to press this open because it's going to be easier to demonstrate to you what happens when you open up your seams. So when you open up your seams, all the pressure and tension are on the threads. And if one of these threads gets broken and comes undone, then you have an instant hole and that hole can just spread on down. So that's why you want to flip or press your seams to one side because once this is quilted, your quilt, you got your top, your batting, and your back, and it's quilted, little stitches are going across there, then all the tension is on the fabric and none of the tension is on the thread. So you have a much stronger quilt block when your seams are pressed to one side. In fact, when I take my quilt top to be quilted, which is officially sewn all together. I have not met a long arm quilter yet, and I've asked many if they prefer seams um, opened or turned to one side. Hands down, they always say, press your seams to one side. It makes a better quilt top and it'll last the test of time. So that's my tip. Uh, don't open up your seams if you can avoid it at all. Okay, then I'm gonna stitch that down and make a four patch. Here's my four patch. And again, you do the same thing as you're building your block. You're gonna set your seams. Sometimes I use a clapper at the stage, sometimes I don't. And then you open it up. Now there's no light or dark side, is there? So sometimes I just choose a side and flip it open. on my clapper cross, and I call it good. But for some people, they're like, there is a lot of bulk in the middle. There's a lot of seams converging together. And I wanna show you another option that you can do, because there is some bulk right there. I'm gonna move that to the side. Okay, let me show you this quick little technique you can do to open up your seam right here. This, just one little spot. So I put my fingers in like this. And I flip it to one side. It just kind of loosens those threads up and it makes it like a little four patch right there in the center. Again, you're not opening up your seams. You're just opening them up right there. And now look at this. You can flip that one seam that direction, the one seam opposite. And you've got that little four patch in the center. So take a look at that. And then that lies super flat. So as you get more complicated blocks, more thought needs to go into how you press your seams. I just wanted to show you how I press the seams, a little more complicated block, but it's still an hourglass. You've got a four patch here and a bigger four patch within the four patch. Kind of look at this hourglass, we popped open this intersection here, we popped up in those intersections. But overall, the seams are flipped to one side or the other. But the block lies super flat. Again, it's an accurate size block that lies super flat. That is our goal. Okay, let's talk about pressing when you have an applique quilt block. So here's an applique quilt block. I never use any kind of moisture or a mist on this, and I only press from the back side. I don't want any shrinkage in this block, and when you add um, water, you can get a little sh shrinkage. So a lot of times I just press heat only on the back side. Sometimes I'll let my clapper sit on top of it for a little while, and that's how I press applique blocks. 
Okay, let's talk about something besides quilting. Maybe you're making a um, garment or using a different substrate. The clappers work great and pressing is just as important and other substrate sewing like it is quilting. So I've got knits together. Say we're making a little knit dress. This is, use your imagination. And we've got our seam. Now usually you have a bigger seam than a quilt seam. And so it's a little easier to open up. We'll open up the seam because guess what? We're not quilting, we are sewing. So open up a seam and the clapper. And this is where, when I'm garment sewing, a lot of times, check your fabrics, but I'm gonna add some water and steam. And that makes a really, for a really great um, pressing open your seams. That's really helpful. Now the next thing you often do when you're garment sewing is you're pressing a hem. And I'm going to show it on also linen. Linen needs to be pressed all the time, right? It gets so wrinkly. And again, you can use your starch. You can use your mister or you can use steam. But a lot of times um, you're going to need moisture to get good press seams. Okay, look at that. Look how beautifully that presses. I am just such a fan of these clappers. I think they do a beautiful job in absorbing the heat and moisture and giving you great results in your sewing project. Okay, a quick side note. Um, I didn't mention this before, but a lot of times if you are doing a complicated quilt um, that has a lot of piecing, the pattern writer will tell you which way to press your seams. So read your pattern thoroughly through and watch for those tips because they'll make a big difference when you're assembling your block. So that's a good tip there. So those are my tips for pressing. I know I had a lot of them. Sometimes I use them all. Sometimes I cheat and don't use any, but those are the ideal pressing techniques. But I would love to hear what works for you. So like always, we welcome your comments on this channel. We read them all and we would love to hear your pressing tips as well.